Electric air taxis are getting closer to reality with more successful test flights being conducted around the world. I feel like one of the Jetsons. Image Matrix tech editor Juro Sen has been following developments. Juro, how long before I can hail a flying taxi? <laughs> well, it depends where you live, Tim, but if in the US... It could be as early as 2024 or 2025. That's how rapid things are moving along. And given what's happened recently, uh, companies like uh, Joby or Archer Aviation in the United States have rapidly moved with approvals for testing. Uh, they are looking at not necessarily autonomous drones. We're looking at having a pilot. And what this is about is air travel, say, from the city, downtown Manhattan, or if it happens in Australia, it's downtown Melbourne or Sydney or Brisbane, and then you get a quick flight across to the airport. Now, this is going to carve off anything from half an hour to 45 minutes, and these flights can be sort of programmed to pick up lots of different people. And because they're all electric-driven, the noise is very low, like much lower than a helicopter. And as you can see how it's advanced over the last few years, but it has picked up. And that's why it's a story this morning, because of all the latest approvals and testing that's been done by these companies. So that is where we're looking at heading. And because of these EV tolls, these vertical takeoff and landing aircraft, uh, we're looking at a Jetsons like future. I mean, this is the Ehang drone. So this is a bit different. No one flies it. It does it automatically, and it's been testing in Israel. They've been in Belgium as well, in Japan, doing island hopping. But in Belgium, they actually tested using uh, blood products or testing blood products, moving it from one place to another. So they're quite large in doing that. But normally, it would carry people in it as well. So, Tim, the age of the Jetsons, where you're hailing down a taxi from the air, is getting, getting closer. But I think the good thing is they are much quieter than a helicopter. <laughs> So, so, look, I'm just I'm fascinated by this story. So what, what would there be sort of sort of aerial cab ranks, so to speak, where... Because obviously, you know, they need to land somewhere. How, how would that work? Well, you obviously, obviously, being in TV, you would have used the chopper for many years and you do need a, a helipad, everything set up. Well, you would have, a, like, a pad of these things, maybe a circular key, you know, where the ferries are. You'd have a pad of where these... Choppers are ready to go. Well, not choppers, but uh, EV tolls, electric uh, uh, vertical takeoff and landing vehicles. And, and then they go straight to the airport or places that, um, that are tourist spots, and they do it really fast. And as I said, they're very quiet compared to a helicopter. So that's, that's how you're looking at it working, Tim. And uh, the, they're very keen to make the, the, the footprint very uh, minimal on people around. Mm, fascinating stuff. Now, what about <laughs> DJI's new action camera? Is it a worthy challenger to your GoPro, bro? Yeah, you know, you know, I love my GoPro, but um, DJI famous for drones, and this is it. This is the uh, Osmo Action 4, and it looks just like a GoPro, but it is pretty sweet when it comes to taking action. Now, it's got a bigger sensor this year, the Action 4, and, in fact, the colours it produces are amazing given this sensor. And I've found some great results already in my testing, uh, but it is a great action camera that you could should consider. Now, it's slightly cheaper than the GoPro, but not by much. And the GoPro has some things that it does better, and this camera does other things that it does better. But it's got some unique features, and I found it uh, really cool that it's got this sort of magnetic attachment uh, that you have that you can put on the side of it to make it do vertical videos, and of course, horizontal videos, as you can see here. But it also, you know, with that selfie stick, it can actually remove it to a certain extent, uh, Tim. And uh, that's pretty cool. So if you want to remove the selfie stick after you shoot it, it can do it. It's not the same as the 360 one, but it's pretty good. You can get a little external remote control to the log your GPS and get going. And it's pretty tough as well. I mean, it can survive uh, pretty low temperatures and go down to 18 metres underwater without having an extra cage. You know, it's essentially like DJI's version of the latest GoPro. And it's really a nice, nice uh, unit. But it does give you nice natural colours and I've taken around Sydney and tested it out. I've got to jump into Maroubra Beach soon and test it out as well, Tim. But there you go. That's from DJI and is the Osmo Action 4. Available now. I know you're a big Oppo fan, um, and they are mm. shaking up the local phone market. Yeah, they are. And if anyone wants to take the step from 
iOS or iPhone to Android, then I think um, Oppo is the best way to go because they're very similar. And this is it. This is the new Oppo Reno 10. And the Reno 10 line is a really good affordable line. And as you can see here, looks great. It's only around $749. Now, it competes with the other phone, which I've got here, which is the uh, Google Pixel 7a. So they're exactly the same price, and they're very close. One, the, one phone will sort of edge out the other phone in one area, and then the other phone will edge out the other in another area. So <clears throat> the choices are tough, but it's good to have these choices around the $750 mark. Cameras are fantastic. They've always been great. So they compete with the Google cameras quite well. So it's definitely worth considering. So in this um, sub-$1,750 area, the Reno 10 5G is a great option, but it's up against the uh, Google Pixel 7a. It's also a great option. But uh, but uh, Oppo, good ca you, you're never going to be let down by getting one of these phones from Oppo. But the great thing, I think, about <clears throat> these photos and the performance is for 750 bucks, you actually get a really good phone that's tough and that feels good in the hand, and you don't feel like you're missing out, Tim. So for many people, you could buy, like, four of these phones for the price of one high-end phone. So that's uh, just become available in Australia now, the Oppo Reno 10 uh, 5G by Oppo.